Shani and I are both putting in a really valiant effort not to start crying any minute now. <laughs> so I made a promise to Sarah Nacido that this would not be a goodbye speech, because yes, I will be a student at Cooper Medical School in the fall, and yeah. <laughs> Yes, Jenny and I are transitioning the Patient Advisory Council into the hands of wiser, brighter, and as it so happened, younger colleagues. <laughs> but no, this is not a goodbye. Goodbye means going somewhere, and physically, yes, I will be moving from the great state of Arkansas to about 20 minutes away from that girl, and Philadelphia doesn't know what's about to hit it. <laughs> but in every other sense of the word, it's not really appropriate. I think many of you can identify with the idea that once you're a part of Improved Care Now, you're really always a part of this community. It's quite the opposite of, <laughs> it's quite the opposite of Jenny's ode to her long lost colon. We are never, ever getting back together. Like all of us, we are so, so getting back together. <laughs> so I'm so sorry that this is going to likely incite feelings of horror in many of you that have been through this before. Uh, and likely the same in many of you who have not, but y'all are coming to medical school with me. <laughs> we are a curriculum. I thought a lot about that this weekend, that that's part of our name, like we're a learning health network. We're a network learning together. But I think it's really easy to forget in the midst of doing that work, what that all means, that we're all students. And if I'd been brought up through the education system rightly as I hope I have as someone who's about to graduate, being a student isn't about getting everything right every time. It's about doing and trying and revising and experiencing and having an open, engaged mind that recognizes success not as a thing but as a method. When I first started co-chairing the PATH with Jenny, I really strongly believed that we needed to build a framework for what the engagement of patients throughout the learning health system would look like. Jenny and I took the pack and we structured it into task forces. We are distributing leadership. We are increasing intra-PAC participation. We are concentrating our resources on developing sustainable task forces, on developing leaders. We are increasing our collaboration with your groups throughout the network. We are trying to foster and amplify the voices of not only PAC members, but every single patient in the network so that they feel empowered and they can be leaders if they so choose. I've had so many mentors by chance, and I wish they hadn't been by chance, because what if probability turned out differently? Would I be here? Would I be going to medical school? Would I believe that I can actually be a part of real life changes? And I don't think that should be up to chance. I feel like every patient should have that opportunity to be a part of that, um, and that the mentorship to get there shouldn't be a thing that happens by chance or by luck. And we're doing that here at the community conference every time. There's so many we are's, and very little of that ever seems to be done at a particular moment in time. And I've struggled with that because I like things wrapped in bows. I like books with plot lines that all come together nicely at the end. But that's not real life collaboration and, and work. What we are is that we're changing the paradigm. In 2013, just thinking about the PAC, we were a Facebook group. Today, we're present on multiple network-wide communication platforms and building a presence within care centers. In 2013, we were trying to fit into interventions to carve out corners and spaces and places where we could fit. Today, we are co-creating our own innovations. You're allowing us to co-create yours, and I think most importantly, you see the value in that. In 2013, patients and parents were a minority here. And today and yesterday, sitting in so many groups where there was such fantastic diversity, it doesn't feel like that anymore. We are changing the paradigm. And it's exciting and terrifying to me, for me as I enter medical school, as I've said to many of you individually this weekend, to know that, knowing that I not only want to carry this mission with me, but knowing that I have to because it's not the paradigm everywhere. And it's so encouraging that because of all of you, I feel like I can help make that the paradigm in other places. Yesterday, I sat in a hotel room with six other patients for three hours and we created a key diver diagram. That just couldn't have happened even six months ago. We are growing, we are doing, we are leading, we are learning, and that's not only true for the Patient Advisory Council, that's true for the network. 
We are so much that we forget to recognize. I hope you all have stopped and thought lately about what you have accomplished in the past two years, or the past five years, or the past however many years you want to measure it by. If we measure ourselves by growth and not by an end point, I really think that we can see ourselves as a community in a clearer light. And I think that's such a beautiful thing. We are Improved Care Now, and I am part of Improved Care Now, and I'm so, so enthusiastically proud of that. And I can't wait to carry that with me to Cooper and beyond and see where it takes all of us. Thank you for helping take us there and for believing that we make a difference together. And please go home and believe in your own patients and believe that they can help you go further. It may not be easy or quick or tidy like some of us, including me, really, really like, but I think it's the future. Real life is a lot like IBD. It's messy, it's irritable, it causes issues at the worst times, and sometimes it leaves you in a big pile of poop. <laughs> But you know, some of you know I was in Disney World right before I came here. Um, to make a parallel to the wisdom of Tinkerbell for a moment, one of my other personal heroes not in this room, uh, there's this quote from Peter Pan, if you stop believing in fairies, their magic fails, they, they don't have pixie dust anymore, you can't fly, etc. And We need to celebrate our successes and recognize them and I'm so glad we do because I believe that if we stop believing, the collaboration can work. The collaboration with patients and families matter and can work. Our magic as a collaborative will be lost. This is why we should celebrate. Not because failures don't happen or because everything is going to happen easy as we continue to grow, but because I think sometimes we have to remind ourselves that they do to keep on believing. Because when we keep trying and keep trying and trying, we eventually succeed. And it feels like magic. It feels like magic to me a lot. But it's just people believing. And I'm really glad to have grown up with that.